in this video, we're going to introduce uh, two new definitions. But before that, uh, let's uh, define the following new quantity that is uh, m sub j. It's defined as the expectation of n sub j given x0 is j. And let's further define uh, what is n sub j. So where n sub j is defined as the minimum value of n is greater than or equal to 1 such that uh, xn is j. All right. Now, if we look at um, this expectation, it is nothing but the expected number of steps that this markup chain returns state j from starting at state j. All right. It's uh, so mj is the expected number of steps for this marker chain from starting at stage A and uh, return to uh, stage A. Then we have the following definition. That is, if state J is recurrent, for recurrent state J, if M sub J is less than infinity, it means it's a finite number, we say J is positive recurrent. And we'll see in a moment why it's called a positive recurrent. If mj is infinity, we say j is null recurrent. Why the name uh, positive and null is from the sense of this uh, long run proportion? Uh, and let's uh, define the following. So, long run proportion. It is we consider uh, the following thing. First, we're still given uh, x0 is j. And we consider how much time, or say, how many time periods this markup chain spent at stage A. All right among all time periods. First of all, I want to um, remark that um, for a recurrent state J, okay, is for J being recurrent, J will always be visited infinitely many times. However, the proportion of this J being visited, so however, this proportion may be zero. Um,
And for a simple markup chain, uh, we have the following proposition. That is, if the markup chain is irreducible, which means it has only one class and recurrent, the markup chain being recurrent means every state in the its state space is recurrent. Then for any state j, we have we have the following relation. That is pi of j is one over m sub j, and where this pi of j is the long run proportion. of state j is a proportion of this markup chain spent at state j against like all its time steps and now uh, let's try to prove it right so first we define uh, the following thing um, let's assume The proof is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we assume uh, this markup chain starts from uh, stage A. All right. And uh, we let T1 to be the uh, The number of steps until this MC re enters state J. Okay. T1, uh, maybe one, it means uh, uh, next step, this MC returns to state J. It may be two. Um, it means uh, after two steps, this uh, markup chain returns to J. And the once this markup chain returned J, we restart our clock. That is, uh, T2 is the additional number of steps until this uh, markup chain re-enters, returns to state J uh, since T1. And similarly, we can define T3 is the additional number of uh, steps until this markup chain returns to stage A since T1 plus T2. Okay. And etc. So now what happens is, uh, um, let's consider the sum of T1 plus T2 plus T3 blah 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 this is uh, um, Tn is the total number of steps It takes for this markup chain spending 
n plus 1 steps at state j. All right. Uh, why it's n plus 1 is because uh, so we have x0 is uh, is j and we have after t1 step which means x sub t1 is j as well and etc we have x sub tn is j and totally we have m plus 1 uh, steps at j and what happens is we know that t1 to uh, tn is the uh, total number of steps and we know that this m plus 1 is the number of steps this markup chain spends at state j then what happens is this pi j is nothing but if we consider the limiting probability we just let this n goes to infinity of m plus 1 divide the sum of ti, all right? So um, moreover, when we compute this probability, we notice that each ti, they are independent, identically distributed. Why it's independent is because uh, the independent C is because independency is due to uh, Markov chain is memoryless. Every time we reach state J again, it is as if this Markov chain restarted. And identically distributed, uh, we have a common mean that is uh, this E of ti is nothing but uh, our mj uh, right here. Uh, the index might be a little bit confusing, so this i right here is from uh, 1 to this n for i equals 1 to n. All right. And now if we're computing uh, this limit, what happens is we can divide n on both top and the bottom, all right? And we know that by strong law of large number, for IID um, random variables, we have the sum of these uh, random variables divided by n converges to its mean as n goes to infinity with probability 1. So this is a strong law of large number. And what happens is uh, this limit equals with probability 1. And this is nothing but 1 over mj. And now we can see uh, where the name comes from. If it's positive recurrent,
it means mj is less than infinity, uh, which means pi j is greater than zero. So we have a non-zero proportion of steps that this uh, um, Markov chain spends at this state j. For non recurrent, which is by definition is mj is infinity, this means pi j is zero. This means even though this state is recurrent, this j is recurrent, however, collectively the proportion is zero versus uh, all steps. And let me add this uh, remark here. Keep this in mind, uh, this, this proposition is only for irreducible Markov chain and every state is recurrent. So now let me add uh, this uh, remark here. That is, uh, if a Markov chain has only finite states, and uh, is irreducible. Irreducible means uh, we have only uh, one class. Then every single state of this MC is recurrent. For this type of a uh, um, simple Markov chain, uh, we can easily compute um, the long run proportions of uh, every state. And we'll see some uh, examples in the next video.